This video is about roots, which are really important to trees. Their two primary functions are to keep a tree anchored in the ground and to absorb resources from the surrounding soil. Roots can also work as storage and they can produce hormones that are moved to the upper parts of the tree through the xylem. The root systems of dicots and monocots differ, which affects how you manage them and how you work around them. The very first root that grows out of a seed is called a primary root. In monocots, the primary root doesn't last very long and it's replaced by more roots that grow from a section of the trunk called the root initiation zone. Because monocots are not capable of secondary growth, they don't get any thicker. So the roots that grow out of this initiation zone are all about the same size and there isn't one that's dominant over another. When you have this situation where all the roots are about the same, this is botanically called a fibrous root system, but you will hear people use fibrous roots in a more casual way. Because the roots are constantly being regenerated here, it makes it a lot easier to transplant a mature palm compared to an actual tree. Dicots have what's called a taproot system, and this does not mean that it has a huge taproot that goes all the way down. What this means is that the roots have more of a hierarchy to them. The primary root of dicots is a taproot, which just means that it goes straight down from the seed. From this taproot, you have roots branching off of it, which are called lateral roots, and these generally are horizontal-ish. And from the lateral roots, you may also develop sinker roots, which also dive down vertically. And these different orientations of roots are really important to keep the tree anchored in the ground. The way dicot roots grow is that the tip of the root is constantly elongating. And after the root elongates, lateral roots come off of that. And the root system gets larger and larger and further and further away from the tree as those roots creep out. At the same time, the roots are also thickening because dicots are capable of secondary growth and they can add wood on to their branches, trunks, their roots. So you'll find the oldest roots closest to the trunk and they will also be the biggest because they've had more time to thicken up. These biggest, oldest roots by the trunk are called structural roots and they're really important to keep a tree upright and anchored in the soil. You have to be really careful doing root pruning activities or anything that will disturb the roots in the structural root area because excessive pruning of the structural roots can jeopardize the stability of the whole tree. The absorption roots are the really really small roots far from the tree. Relative to their mass, they have a lot of surface area, which is excellent for absorbing stuff from the surroundings. Most of the absorption roots tend to be within the upper four to six inches of the soil surface because that's where you have the most water and oxygen. So even some minor activities like grading or compaction will affect the tree's ability to absorb stuff from the soil. There's a misconception that the roots essentially mirror the canopy or the drip line of the tree, and that's just simply not true. Roots can extend two to three times past that, if not more, unless you had some obstruction like a building or something like that in the way. So a tap root system just describes roots that have this hierarchy of large root to small root, even if the original tap root is no longer in existence. For trees like oaks that have a tap root as a seedling, it can be very hard to transplant those trees if they grew from seed in their current location. Some species can grow aerial roots from their branches and their trunks. And this isn't just limited to warm and humid environments. I've seen it in coastal areas in a temperate region. If these roots reach the ground, they can also act as prop roots, like in mangroves, on banyans, and certain palms. The last thing I want to talk about with regards to roots is the root crown. It's also called the trunk flare. And it refers to that area of the stem where the trunk transitions into the roots. The tissue of these two parts of the tree, the trunk and the roots, are different. 
roots are accustomed to being underground, to being moist, whereas the trunk is not. The trunk typically flares out in a noticeable way before it enters the ground. Oftentimes, when development has occurred or there's any kind of disturbance around a tree, the grade may be changed. There might be extra soil added around the trunk so that this trunk flare is buried. So if you're seeing a trunk that just goes straight down into the ground or seems to taper a little bit less than you would expect, you might look at doing something like a root crown excavation where you expose the trunk back to the original flare. The reason why you do this is because the trunk tissue is not used to being covered by soil and underground where it's kept moist year round. This greatly increases the chances that the trunk will develop decay and that creates other structural issues. Another root related term in the biology chapter is root mat. It's defined as a dense network of roots and for palms it's specifically close to the trunk. So maybe useful for the test, not something that I've personally ever used 